Hi, and welcome or welcome back to this Friday's five minute consult with your favorite family med doc. In these videos, I discuss everything that you need to know about some of the most common health conditions in five minutes or less. These common health conditions include topics listed A to Z, and today's topic begins with the letter C. So let's talk about cellulitis. What is it? No, it's not that unsightly condition that women get on the back of their legs called cellulite. It's cellulitis, which is actually an infection of the skin and soft tissues underneath. What causes it? Cellulitis can occur anytime there is bacteria introduced underneath the skin. It can be from any break in the skin, such as a scratch, a cut, or even a bug bite. While working in urgent care, I saw a ton of patients who had somehow gotten a spider bite, and this led to a lot of redness and swelling. While they are more concerned about the spider bite, the more important thing to treat is the actual skin infection that the spider bite led to, which is cellulitis. So what are the symptoms? When you have cellulitis, whether it be due to a scratch or a bug bite, you will experiencing a lot of redness that is expanding. You may even see some swelling, experience some pain around the area, or notice some warmth on the skin. You may be more at risk to develop cellulitis if you have trauma to the skin, if you are a diabetic, if you have circulatory problems such as not enough blood flow to your arms or your legs, which can be evidenced by varicose veins, if you have any type of liver disease such as hepatitis or cirrhosis, or if you have other skin disorders such as eczema or psoriasis. Cellulitis may also occur as an infection after surgery where you may notice redness, warmth, or swelling around the surgical site. Some other symptoms of cellulitis that we didn't talk about yet may include streaks of redness. Let's say you had a cut on your arm, you're noticing redness and swelling there, but then you're also seeing a streak of redness going all the way up your arm. Also, any type of yellow or clear fluid along with pus in a cut or abrasion can represent an infection of the skin. If you are noticing any of these symptoms or signs on your skin, you do need to see a doctor because if cellulitis goes untreated, it can get worse and it can become severe. If left untreated, you could start to develop high fevers or chills, nausea and vomiting, enlarging or hardening of the red area, as well as increased pain or numbness when you touch the area. More importantly, cellulitis should be treated right away because if not, it can actually leak into the bloodstream causing a serious blood infection, which can become severe leading to something called sepsis or even death. So what is the treatment? Because cellulitis is caused by bacteria infecting the skin, it does need to be treated with antibiotics. This time, topical antibiotics or something like Neosporin is not going to cut it. You do need to be on an oral antibiotic that your doctor will prescribe for you. If you are also experiencing some pain around the area, you can take Tylenol or Ibuprofen. And sometimes applying a cool pack or ice pack can also help. In some cases of cellulitis, it can be a severe infection caused by a bacteria known as MRSA or methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. In this case, your doctor will need to put you on two antibiotics to help clear the infection, typically clindamycin and Bactrim. If your cellulitis isn't improving or resolving after being on two antibiotics in the outpatient setting, then your doctor may suggest that you need to be admitted to the hospital to receive IV antibiotics to clear the infection. Also, in some cases, although it's rare, cellulitis can form an abscess, which is an accumulation of pus underneath the skin. If that happens, your doctor will need to perform a small outpatient procedure, which is going to be putting a small cut in the skin to drain the pus. Now let's talk about prevention. Some ways to prevent cellulitis from occurring would be to keep good personal hygiene and to keep your skin clean. You want to protect your skin from any scrapes or cuts, but if you do get a cut, you want to wash that area with soap and water gently so that it can prevent any bacteria from getting in. When some people get a cut on their skin, their initial reaction is to pour a ton of hydrogen peroxide on the wound. They then proceed to continue to clean their wound daily with hydrogen peroxide. I would like to inform you that this is not the best wound care method as hydrogen peroxide can actually be harsh on the skin and cause further breakdown of the skin. 
Just a gentle cleansing with regular soap and water is all you need to help clean the skin as the wound heals. Over-the-counter triple antibiotic ointment or something known as Neosporin is also heavily used by people, but applying a lot of this can actually introduce bacteria into the skin, especially if you're not washing your hands prior to putting it on. So when it comes to Neosporin, I always tell my patients less is best and always make sure your hands are clean, especially before you apply it to your skin. And that wraps up our discussion today on cellulitis. I hope that you learned something new. As always, if you have further questions about this topic, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I would be happy to answer those for you. If you would like to see more videos like this where I educate you on some of the most common health conditions, make sure you subscribe as I am releasing new videos every Friday. And I will see you on the next video. Until next time, bye!